Hello and welcome to this free preview lecture series of my P-Power exam preparation course. In this lecture, we are going to discuss various methods of ground resistance testing. Overall, this is a relatively easy topic with a few equations, but the most important thing that you need to understand when it comes to ground resistance testing is the apparatus and the parameters. So what does A mean, what does B mean, and how the setup is done. And in order to use the formulas properly, you actually have to make sense of it. So that's why going a little bit deeper into theory and doing some practice problems is really important. Before we dive into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video and click the bell icon and the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Hello and welcome to part 2 of our multi-part lecture series on the topic of ground resistance testing. We will start this lecture by reviewing IEEE standards on grounding. And then we will take a look at the three methods for ground resistance testing, namely the equally spaced four pin method or the Wenner array, unequally spaced four pin method, Schlumberger array, and the third one is a variation of depth method. It is also known as the driven rod method. IEEE grounding standards. If you work in power systems engineering and do grounding design quite frequently or expect to do grounding design in near future, I would highly recommend you to get access to these three IEEE standards. IEEE standard 80, which is concerned with grounding of outdoor AC substations. IEEE standard 81, which is concerned with measurement of soil resistivity and grounding resistance um, of installed systems. And IEEE standard 142, which is known as the green book. It is concerned with the design and practical aspects of grounding. So these standards have a lot of uh, equations, a lot of theory, a lot of notes on application. And um, if you, as I mentioned, if you work with grounding or if you do grounding design, then it's highly recommended not only for the P power exam preparation, but um, for your future reference as well to get access to these three standards. Ground resistance testing methods. There are a lot of different methods out there for ground resistance testing and when you go through those IEEE standards that I just mentioned, you will find that in addition to these three which are discussed in NCSP Power Reference Handbook, there are a lot of other methods and each method has its own advantages and disadvantages. Some are much more simpler to conduct, some provide you higher accuracy at the expense of more sophisticated setup and so on. But uh, for our purpose, we are going to look at these three standards which are referenced in NCSP Power Reference Handbook, namely the Wenner method, which consists of equally spaced four pins. Then we have Schlumberger method, which consists of unequally spaced four pins. And then we have the driven rod method in which we will basically use one test electrode and um, determine the grounding resistance based on that. The first method that we are going to discuss is the equally spaced 4-pin method, also known as the Wenner method. It is discussed in NCSP Power Reference Handbook. Wenner method is probably the most commonly used ground resistance measuring technique. And uh, let us discuss the setup of this particular method. So what we do is we take four electrodes of equal length L and they're driven in a straight line at equal distance A. So you can see that this is a straight line and all of these four electrodes are spaced apart at a distance of A. Voltage is measured between the inner probes. So you have the voltage measurement being done between P1 and P2 and current is measured at the outer probes. So you actually have a current source, a voltage source over here, which will uh, push current through this, um, through this branch. And the idea is that we want to be able to measure the voltage between the inner probes. And resistance and resistivity are calculated using the formulas that we'll just discuss uh, briefly. Uh, but resistance is simply based on the Ohm's law. V is equal to IR and R is equal to V divided by I. Now the voltage you're grabbing from here and the current measurement you're grabbing from here. So how do we interpret the results? As I mentioned, your resistance is pretty simple to calculate. It is simply V divided by I. So the voltmeter reading divided by the ammeter reading. Resistivity, however, has a much more sophisticated formula. Okay, and this formula includes your resistance, which is calculated from here. A is this equal spacing, and L is the length of 
these electrodes. Now in practice, the length of electrode is actually a lot smaller than the distance. Okay, so that basically means that we can ignore L. So when you ignore L, okay, so if we just remove this term, you'll see that this ends up being 4 pi a r divided by 1 plus 2 a divided by square root of a square, which is basically a. So this will cancel with this minus a divided by square root of a, which is a divided by a. Okay, so this becomes 1. So we have in the denominator 1 plus 2 minus 1, which is equal to 2. So we have 4 pi a r divided by 2, and that will result in 2 pi a r. So as long as the distance between these electrodes is significantly longer than the length of the electrode, then we can use a simplified version of this equation for calculating soil resistivity. So the Wenner method is allowing us not only to calculate the resistance, but also to calculate the soil resistivity. The next method that is discussed in NCSP Power Reference Handbook is the unequally spaced four pin method. It's also known as the Schlumberger method. It is a modified version of the Wenner method and provides greater sensitivity for large spacing. So the setup is almost identical. The only difference is that the distance between the inner, elect inner electrode is not the same as the distance between the outer electrode. Remember previously we had uh, the same distance between all four electrodes. Now that's not the case. You can see that um, the distance between the inner electrodes is 2B and um, they, they, they are spaced such that now A is the distance between the outer electrode and the center of the two inner electrodes. Okay, so this is how B and A are now defined. L is the same, all the electrodes are of the same length L. Now again, we will go about measuring the voltage between the inner probes, inner electrodes, and we will measure the current between the outer probes and outer current um, electrodes. And resistance will again be calculated using the same formula, R is equal to V divided by I. This is your simple Ohm's law and the resistivity equation now will be different. So this is how we will interpret the result. Again, we will find the voltage based on the voltmeter reading. We will find the current based on the ammeter reading and then you will basically get the R. So the ground resistance will be established by means of these two readings. In terms of the soil resistivity, the equation is different. Okay, so you have pi A times a plus 2b. Again, remember a is this distance and b is this distance. Okay, and r is the resistance and again b is uh, the distance for the inner electrodes. Now your a is going to be significantly bigger than b. So you can ignore b. Okay, and when you ignore b in the numerator, so the way it's going to work out is that since in the numerator, this term is going to be bigger than this term then you can just simply ignore this term. Okay, and then you have pi A times A times R divided by 2B, which basically means that you have pi A square divided by 2B times R. Again, in the case of Schlumberger method, which is a variation of the Wenner method, we are basically able to use a very similar setup, which is not difficult. And uh, we are able to find out the ground resistance uh, value as well as the soil resistivity. The third and final method that we are going to discuss over here is the driven rod method. It is based on the fall of potential method. And the setup is again, not very different from the two methods that we've already seen, but you can notice that instead of four pins or four electrodes, we are actually using three pins. So the test electrode is this one. Okay. And it has a diameter of D. It is an important parameter because it will show up in the equation and it is driven into ground to a length L, okay? And the reference electrodes are driven to a shallow length in a straight line. So these are the two reference electrodes. And current is measured between rod one and rod two, as you can see over here. So we have current measurement being done between rod one and rod two. And uh, so this is rod one and this is rod two, and this is the ammeter. And we are measuring the voltage between rod one and rod three. So this is the voltmeter, which is measuring the voltage between these two rods. The value of resistance 
is calculated using Ohm's law as we've seen in the previous two methods as well, R is equal to V divided by I. And in the case of the driven rod method, the resistance is related to resistivity through this equation. Okay, and we can rearrange, once we've calculated the resistance, we can rearrange this equation to calculate the value of soil resistivity. In this equation, you can see that there are a few parameters that we need to pay attention to. The length of the test rod, and then the diameter of the test rod. Okay, so that's why this diameter is important. Other than that, resistance is calculated based on V and I, which is simple and straightforward. And once you have resistance, you can calculate the soil resistivity. Let us now go through a few practice problems on the topic of ground resistance testing. We will make use of these different methods that we've discussed and see how we can apply the equations. Problem number one is asking us to calculate the soil resistivity using the Venner method. If 10 ohm resistance is recorded by the ohm meter and the electrodes are placed two meters apart. So we can go ahead and use the equation for soil resistivity, the simplified version. And according to that equation, we just need to know A and R. And you can see in the problem statement, we are provided both. We have R equal to 10 ohms and we have A equal to two meters. So the resistance, the soil resistivity will end up being 125.6 ohm meter or in centimeters we can express it as 12566 ohm centimeter. Problem number two. Problem number two is asking us to refer to the soil resistivity table and establish the possible type of soil. So we already know what the soil resistivity is and we are given this table and using this table we will basically determine which type of soil this is. So you can see that the soil resistivity that we have calculated and remember the units are ohm centimeter. It is uh, falling under the category of sand and gravel mixture which has a resistivity range of 1020 ohm centimeter all the way to 135,000 ohm centimeter. Now it is not clear cut because you can argue that it can potentially fall in the other category as well um, as varying proportions of sand and gravel but essentially this is not a swampy area. It, it probably has um, higher soil resistivity than, than compared to some of the lower soil resistivity options. It's always not very clear cut because soil contains so many different, um, has so varying composition. But if we were to ballpark it, this is what we would classify it as. Problem number three is asking us to calculate soil resistivity using the Schumberger method. If 100 ohm resistance is recorded by the ohm meter when the outer electrodes are placed 4 meter apart and the inner electrodes are placed 0.25 meter apart. Here's the equation for soil resistivity using Schumberger method. Now one of the things that we have to be careful with is that the total distance between the outer electrodes is 4 meters. Okay, so it doesn't mean that A is equal to 4 meter. It basically means that A plus A is equal to 4 meter. So that means that 2A is equal to 4 meter and A is equal to 2 meter. So wherever we have A we will substitute 2. Similarly the inner electrodes are 0 0.25 meter apart so that doesn't mean that B is equal to 0 0.25 it basically means that 2B because we're looking at this total distance is equal to 0 0.25. So wherever you have 2B you will substitute 0 0.25. And when you calculate this, it will come out to be 5,654 ohm meter. The next problem is asking us to calculate the ground resistance using the driven rod method. If soil resistivity is 2,500 ohm meter, diameter of the test rod is 5 centimeter and the length of driven rod is 2 meters. So we know the equation for driven rod method. Resistance is equal to this. We will make use of the information that is provided in the problem statement. This is the resistivity. This is the length of the driven rod. And the diameter is this. Make sure that you convert the diameter into meters because it's provided in centimeters. So when you plug in these details, you will get the answer for resistance as 948 ohms. If you found this preview lecture helpful, I'm confident that you will also benefit from the full course that contains more than 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCES P Power Exam specification for the computer-based testing format. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus 
full-length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well-reviewed course comes with an amazing 30-day full refund policy, no questions asked. Once you enroll, I will schedule a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with you to develop a custom study plan based on your schedule and time constraints. On top of all of this, I have also included a special discount link in the text section of this video for you.